Their productions go beyond theatre, urging their audiences to take action with performances that certainly pack a punch. The Belarus Free Theatre has been banned in its own country. Its artists now live in exile, making powerful political work like their latest play, Dogs of Europe. As that piece comes to the stage here in Paris, the company's co-founder, Natalia Kaliada, joins me here in the studio. Natalia, hi, thanks for being with us. Hello. Now, this play takes us to a dystopian future. It's set in 2049 in two places, an imagined version of Russia, a sort of pseudo-European Union. Tell us a bit more about this nightmare vision of the world and how you brought that to the stage. Uh, the novel uh, was uh, written in 2018 by Belarusian writer Algit Bukharevich. It's a 1,000-page novel uh, that talks about dystopian future when Russia built up a new Reich. And we performed that show and produced it underground, under dictatorship, in February of 2020, before the world hit uh, COVID pandemic. But unfortunately, uh, what we saw in that novel and what we put on stage uh, started uh, to unwrap very painfully and tra tragically. And uh, we see how uh, indifference of Europe uh, and the Western democracy allowed Russia to build up a new Reich. Indeed, it is a very a prescient adaptation of that novel. So let's take a look and get a feel for the production. This is Dogs of Europe. Самым соправным. Физкультура, дисциплина, расовый отбор, с гэтым не спать, гэтага маши, с гэтага слухать. Як у школе. Школа, бабка. Соправная белорусская школа, ось где третий рай. Now, Natalia, as you said, you started working on this play well before the recent events in Ukraine uh, as a warning shot, uh, as you put it, about growing authoritarianism. Do you think people were forewarned about what was going to happen with Russia and Ukraine or they chose to ignore it? Uh, unfortunately, politicians uh, in the European Union and United States uh, chose to ignore. Uh, people knew. That's the situation where we have the reality that was happening in dogs of Europe. But because it was ignored, now we have what we have. And again and again, that's our last chance to stop Russia of building that Reich for good, not only for Ukrainians or Belarusians, but for Europeans for the whole European con continent and beyond. Now, on the situation in uh, Belarus, as I mentioned, your company effectively operates in exile. Can you tell us how the Belarus Free Theatre got started and why you can no longer really work very much there? We've started uh, in uh, 2005 underground because uh, dictatorship in Belarus exists already for 28 years. And for the first six years, we've been shouting and screaming again to the world politicians and leaders saying, if you don't stop dictatorship in Belarus, uh, the most sophisticated uh, dictatorship will be born in Russia. In Belarus, every single article of UN declaration um, of human rights violated. Uh, our friends are kidnapped and killed. Their bodies not found. Those who did that, they're still in power. And for today, we have uh, around 15,000 criminal cases. Uh, we have more artists in jail in Belarus than even human rights defenders or journalists. And today we have uh, political prisoners that are reaching around 2,000 uh, people. And today we must talk about uh, Lukashenko and completely complicit in the war and to be recognized together with Putin as a terrorist that is killing Ukrainians today. Indeed, uh, artistic resistance, you mentioned there, artists uh, in jail in Belarus, is something that's increasingly important in the region. It's been embraced by many Ukrainians since the beginning of the war. Our correspondent in Kyiv has been to meet the musicians who are putting the events of the past nine months at the centre of their work. Gulliver Krag and Denis Denisov sent us this report. 
one of the biggest hits of the year in Ukraine, imagines a witch casting a spell on the enemy. Enemy, written by a poet who fled Ukraine at the start of the invasion, is performed by Angie Crader, who's still in the country, doing benefit concerts for the army. It's a powerful curse from every Ukrainian woman, as for my own emotions. I'm just reflecting all women's. Fury and hatred is all we feel towards that nation. They're our enemy and that's it. Despite the song's success, Crader plays in small venues with little publicity. We can't play stadiums because there could be an air raid at any time. Perhaps the most successful Ukrainian music video of the year, though, is this one, with over 24 million views on YouTube. It is a vow of revenge for the country's bombed cities, listed in rhyme. Its author, Skovka, recently toured Poland, also raising money for the Ukrainian army and comforting refugees and immigrants. He lists them all. Every bombed town is a huge pain in our hearts, and this song helps us to remember them all. While some artists help the war effort by raising money, others have signed up. Like Pavlo Vishababa, a spoken word poet and musician originally from Donbass. We have to defend our country, right? We've come under attack, and obviously the armed forces now need a lot of people to fight off that attack. Of course, we're at war, and our task is to kill our enemies. This is all very well represented in our folklore. Our national poet, Taras Shevchenko, a large part of his work is about how to kill the Ruskies. Vishibaba's own work, though, is mostly not violent or vengeful. He writes about life on the front line, missing his daughter and his sense of mission. Natalia, we see that powerful message there from Ukrainian artists. How do you think that is bringing about change, if any? That's pretty simple uh, answer, I guess, because when we uh, rehearsed Dogs of Europe um, in London, it was to open at the Barbican in March, uh, Russia continued uh, the war in Ukraine on the 24th of February. That particular day, we came to a rehearsal room with our actors and musicians from Ukraine and a video animator from Ukraine. And we said, should we cancel it? Because all of you are in such a pain because family of our Ukrainian musicians been killed. And the answer was very simple. Nobody could cancel us. We will continue to perform. We must perform because neither Putin nor Lukashenko will wipe us out. And those two monsters must go to jail while artists will continue to shake those politicians. And when we hit the stage and when we sing and when we make jokes, uh, when we have that irony and we're singing in dancing in face of death, because in our situation, it's death and life. And that way, we're able to talk to our audience and they get the message. Mm -hmm. And together with us, we will be able to change it. And that there is opposition, of course, from within Russia, dissident filmmakers, performers, artists. Uh, you've worked with uh, Maria Alyankina from uh, the Russian uh, activist group Pussy Riot. She featured in your play Burning Doors in 2016. Now, that play explores the dangers of making art, how it can even be uh, fatal. You've been in trouble with the authorities in Minsk, your husband as well. Do you have moments when you think that you've gone too far and it's not worth the risk to your life? 
uh, like two months ago when I was uh, in Washington uh, dealing exactly with State Department and working uh, on high-level advocacy in order to stop the war in the Ukrainian dictatorship in Belarus, and my father passed away. This is that particular moment when you question yourself, uh, is it worse of it? And then that same moment, I recall what he said. And he said, for years of our fight, he was saying, you must finish what you've started. Now, finally, we asked you for a cultural tip, something that you've enjoyed particularly recently, and you flagged up a film. Tell us why. Uh, we saw just recently, in between all those nightmares, uh, like losing friends and uh, family members, uh, we got invited to see the film uh, by Kate Blanchett Tar. Kate Blanchett performed that absolutely uniquely, and again, remembering that she's that person who takes care of our actors now. Uh, they stay in her place. And again and again, that unique level of profession uh, that we rarely see now in our days of that big style of fragility and strength and beauty and that incredible humanity at the personal level. We anticipate that will be a number of Oscars. I certainly won't miss it. Thank you very much for the tip, Natalia, and thank you for joining us today. We'll leave you with a clip of that film, Tar, and do remember to check out our website and our social media channels for more arts and culture here on France 24. If you want to dance the mask, you must service the composer. You've got to supplement yourself, your ego, and yes, your identity. You must, in fact, stand in front of the public and God and obliterate yourself. They're known for their cuisine and saying hello with a kiss. They only work 35 hours per week, when they're not on strike, that is. How true are these clichés about France? Every week, Florence Villeminot tears apart stereotypes. Join us for insight into French culture and current events to understand what makes the French so unique. French Connections, presented by Florence Villeminot on France 24 and France24.com.